Let's go here and talk about interfaces, which is something we have introduced at the beginning of this year. Let's say this is an interface. I call it A. And let's say this is an interface. I call it B. Now, in Java, when in back in uh, CSA times, we had a class called dog. And we had another class called poodle. And what did we say was the relationship between dog and poodle? Who remembers? Uh, Mr. Amrani, sir, do you remember the relationship between dog and poodle in CSA? Poodle is a subclass of dog. Poodle is a subclass of dog. We also can say that poodle inherits from... And we can also say that the poodle is a dog. So it has this is a relationship. What does it mean if the dog, for example, were to implement some interface called animal? Let's say that's an interface, some sort of interface. What does that mean? What's inside here? Is there a code in there? What's in there? What does it mean to implement an interface? We say implements. If we were to have a dog class and it Im implements an animal interface, yes, what does it mean, sir? If I looked in this interface, if I opened it up, what would I find in there? Yes, sir? I'd find methods. Would they be all fleshed out? No, what would be there? Just the headers of the methods would be there. So you can think of an interface as like a club which tells you a bunch of rules you have to follow or a bunch of methods you have to write. And if this is a concrete class implementing the method, it has to implement all the methods of the animal class. It could have other methods also, but basically to join this club, you have to follow its rules. So today I'm going to modify this structure slightly by telling you that we can have a method here Sorry, we can have an interface here. I'll call it INTF1. should capitalize that. And we can have another one here. I'll call it INTF2. And now I'm going to use this solid arrow again to, impl impl uh, to imply inheritance. And let's say that I have some class called A, INTF2. So this class A is a concrete class, and it implements this interface. Question, does A also implement this interface? Discuss with your partner. Mr. Nikita, sir, I have an interface over here. This interface inherits from that interface. We've never seen that before, I don't think, in this class. And then this class implements that interface. Does it also implement this interface? Yes. It sir. does. Why, sir? Go ahead, tell me. So interface 2 has all the rules of interface 1 plus some additional rules. Now let's look at this. This is the blue stuff. The blue stuff that you see here are interfaces in Java in the library. And the green stuff are actual classes where you can create items out of. You can see that the collections interface inherits from something called iterable interface. And you can see here that the list interface, which we've been using a little bit in CSA, inherits from the collections interface. So the list interface does a bunch of listy stuff. It does everything that the collections interface does, and it also does everything that the iterable interface does. Iterable just basically means you can loop through it. That's what that means. So is it possible for a class that implements the collection object to not be iterable? Is that possible? Ben, is it possible? No. It is not possible. So now you see that you have learned this one. You've learned this one in CSA. And we're going to spend a large amount of time on this one and this one. We will briefly discuss this one. Uh, and that's going to get basically fill out our knowledge of lists. But today, I want to talk to you a little bit about what's on this side. The Q stuff we'll do in a couple of quarters. I want to talk about this side right here. You can see that there's another interface called set, 
and you can see that in this year we're going to learn a lot about this thing called a hash set. Now there's another interface called sorted set, sorted set that inherits from set and as I mentioned to you that the tree set comes out sorted because it's got an order which is natural order, natural order from smallest to largest. So the tree set implements this interface whereas the hash set implements that interface.